Hello everybody, Sergeant Soul here to back with How to Rust, and today we have a very special episode. It's been something that a lot of people have asked me to cover, and that is tool cupboards. Now I've done a little bit of tool cupboard covering <laughs> in the past when they've made recent changes and whatnot. However, people are still wanting to know the way the tool cupboards work now and the ins and outs and important information that kind of pertain to them. So we're going to cover that in this video. This is part one of potentially four videos of a lot of things people have been asking me to cover. So hopefully if you guys have anything you want specifically covered, please let me know in the comment section and I will make sure to either A, include it in the next upcoming videos or maybe even add a new video on afterwards and, and just keep going from there. So first and foremost, as you can see here, I have a tool cupboard here. We're going to pretend this is our center tool cupboard. Our circle tower, our square base, this, this is all built around this one right here. Now, if you want to place your second layer of tool cupboards, you have to go out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten foundation lengths away in order to place it. Now, as you can see here, I have my tool cupboards placed in the center. If you want to place your tool cupboards closer to the walls, as you can see, it has to be a certain distance away from the wall. Unless you place the tool cupboard first, and then you can get a lot closer to the wall if you absolutely have to. Now, in some situations, you might have to do it this way if you're trying to inch your way in. Other situations, it might just be better to uh, move the foundations in order to get them to the certain position that you need. But it's important to know that in order to get your tool cover down close to the wall, it has to go down before the walls do. See? Just like that. So from here, we're actually going to move through the wall this way. And we're going to talk about external tool covered shacks going along the outside of your base, compound, quarry, whatever it is. Now there's two different ways to do these. One is with the square foundation, the other with the triangle foundation. Personally, I prefer the triangle foundation because one, you're paying for one less wall, but you're also paying for one less high external wall. Now you might be asking yourself, Sergeant Sold, why do I need to put high external walls around my, my tool covered shacks? Well, very easily, for a long time, the tool cupboard shacks were really susceptible to C4 because you toss one C4 on the wall and for some reason it would blow up the tool cupboard shack on the inside, or blow up the tool cupboard. So I'm going to go ahead and toss two C4 on this wall and we're going to see what happens to the tool cupboard inside. Wall's gone, tool cupboard's not. Now I haven't been home in the last couple days, so I haven't been able to keep up to see if they've made a change about this. As far as I know, before I left this last weekend, a tool cupboard inside of a shack with one C4 would be taken down. Now they're not. And that's amazing, because that opens up a lot of potentials for other designs and whatnot, to where you don't have to worry about C4 taking down your tool cupboards on the inside of the shacks. However, though, that still being said, it only took two C4 to take that shack down. And then from there, someone can access this, they can build, they can do whatever they need to do to get over your walls. Having this extra layer of protection, which is the external walls here, rotate you, always make sure those are turned around the right way as well. Because as of right now, there is a, uh, a bug that prevents you from picking the soft side of the walls. It still works for the door frame and the window, but the walls it doesn't. And you never know if that's going to be reversed and they're going to be pickable again. So get into the habit of making sure it's turned the right way. Now from here, we take our high external wall and we just seal it up. There we go. Now you always want to check the corners to make sure that either A, you cannot throw a, a, a survey charge through here, or B, you don't want to be able to shoot through here, you know, as, as much as you can. It's going to be difficult to make the corners line up. And this one, I actually did a pretty good job. I think the only spot that's a little off is right here, but you really can't do much with that. So from here, if you want to use the triangle, which is the one I suggest, we got to remove all this first of all. So let's remove that. Where are you at? You go away too. Are you floating? You're floating. What? Interesting. All right, well, that lets me float the tool cupboard. I don't need you to float though, I need you to go away. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. Go by. Now, when it comes to the triangle, you have to put the tool cupboard down, have to put the tool cupboard down first. You will not be able to place the tool cupboard if the walls are down. So, right there. It's at the very edge of the previous protection that's inside that wall over there. Kind of back and forth here. The line's like right there. So as long as you get it really close, that's, that's the most important thing. You don't want any gaps in coverage. 
So from here, we're gonna throw our walls up like so. It's okay. You have, I think, it's ten minutes to rotate walls once you place them, so that's not a big deal. And then should have thrown the roof on before, but I didn't. Now from here, when it, when you're doing these, the triangles. It's for one gonna take one less high external wall, but you gotta have to. You're gonna have to, yeah. You're gonna have to do it a little differently. You start with one side, and then you have to angle the other two in. Now, in this particular spot, we're on a slope, and it's gonna make this a little bit more difficult. So I'm gonna try my best to get it without any big gaps. And it's being problematic. So we'll try from the other side. Maybe we'll get lucky on this side. Come on. Come on, you can do it. I have faith. Come on! Oh, 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 I think that was our spot. How bad is that? Oh, it's actually pretty good. Not too bad at all. You definitely can't throw a C4 charge through there. And even if you were shooting with uh, ex explosive bullets, there's a good chance that you're going to hit the wall a lot too. So, now these uh, these last walls here are usually pretty difficult to get. Yeah, it's not too bad. Definitely can't get a C4 through there, and we'll try, don't worry. Probably can't get it through there. So from here, yes, it's one wall cheaper. It's a little bit more uh, compact when it comes to trying to put them in tight spaces, and that does help a lot too, especially if you're trying to squeeze one in, in between uh, pre-existing walls that go around your base. But as you can see here, I'm gonna try my best to, to guess it. I can't throw C4 through that gap there because of the collision on the wall. The C4 is just gonna snap to the wall there. So as long as you have the gap pretty tight like that, you won't have any issues. One more, there we go. So our wall took the damage. Nothing inside of here took the damage. Basically what it's doing is it allows you either A, to hear them attacking your walls, and that has saved a lot of people when it comes to their walls or their tool cover checks being picked is being able to hear the machine gun of picks going off, trying to pick through this wall, or they're gonna have to waste eight C4 just to get this wall down, and then an additional two C4 to get through your tool cover shack. So, making sure that you, at the very least, whether it's square or triangle, you put high external walls around it, that's what you need to do. So, from here, there's a lot of other things that you could do with tool cupboards, including placing them on a sloped foundation, which, is the foundation stairs. Let me go ahead and remove this and I'll show you guys that real quick. See, now that one, it didn't float. What's that all about? Anyway, so with this one, basically you're gonna do it like this. And you're gonna have to just imagine a way that this could be useful to you. Like so. And then you, let's see, how do we do this? Go like that, go like that, go like that, and that. You take your tool cupboard, you place it on the stairs, like so. Oh, wait, there we go. Throw walls up on the sides. Oh, that's not the one I wanted. Rotate, throw a wall up. Okay, fine. Throw a wall up there, rotate. A wall here, blah, 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 blah. Oh, of course, you can't make that jump. And then we can actually remove you. Now the hard part's gonna be getting the wall on the back side. No, no, it's not what I wanted. Thank you. Down there. All right. So, we have this completely surrounded. Now you're probably asking yourself, why does it matter to have the tool covered on? Oh, the wall broke. Hmm, interesting. It doesn't attach to the stairs anymore because the stairs aren't attached to anything. Ah, that's a recent change I didn't know about. All right, there we go. You might have to keep the one foundation that the stair is attached to in order for this to work, like so. See that? So we now have our tool cupboard slanted going downhill, and that could be useful to you if you live on a mountain or if you live on a glacier or whatever you live, that you want to pr project your protection downwards. So, with the change to the way the stairs work, it's a little different. You used to be able to remove that uh, foundation there and have this stay on its own. Apparently not the case anymore. Although the stairs stay and the tool coverage stays. That's, that's really peculiar. 
Anyway, I'm sure you guys can figure out how to use that and how to incorporate into your builds. Anyway, this video is getting too long. We're already over 10 minutes, so we're going to go ahead and end this here. Sergeant Soldier, how to rust. And we're looking at tool cupboards and everything that we can do with them and, and how you could use them and whatnot. And we'll see you in the next how to rust video. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching How to Rust, a series for new players to the game of Rust. If you have any ideas for future episodes that could be useful to new players, please feel free to leave a comment in the comments section of this video.